Greetings. We greet you in the name that is above every name today, and that is the name of Jesus the Christ as we come on this blessed Wednesday, the last Wednesday in this month of June. We do thank God for you being with us and joining in with us, and it is always our prayer that all is well with you and that you, as you have joined in with us, we'll be able to inspire you where the word of God is concerned. We pray that, that God has truly blessed you and grace you to be where you are today. And you found yourself and you have chosen to be blessed today. We thank God for all the things that he has already done. Let us go to the Lord in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for your greater grace. Dear Father, that Lord has been with us throughout this day. We thank you for Lord, just Lord, the opportunity to look into your word. Dear Father, that Lord governs our life. And Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity just to share in this, Lord, moment and understand, dear Father, your word as we come, Lord, that we may understand how to walk together and how, Lord, to be, Lord, united in understanding your word. We pray, Lord, you bless us as instructed, that, Lord, you would strengthen us according to your excellent grace. Now, Father, bless us by your Holy Spirit, dear Father, that, Lord, we'll learn some things today, that, Lord, we'll learn how to walk closer to you. Bless us in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. As we come today, we again, as I said, thank you for being with us today. And, and as we come, we're still talking about the Believer's Quest, training for reigning in 2021. Today, we're talking about commission for the process. Commissioned for the process. This process of, of walking with the Lord, I believe it, it helps us to understand we, we don't know it all. We, we are governed by the understanding that it's a process of growth. Uh, everything has a process of growth. A plant has a process of growth. And in this, when we take on that Zoe life, Z-O-E, Zoe life, uh, we take on a process of growth in him. That's that God kind of life. Do we automatically walk and do the things, you know, automatically like him? No, it's a process of growth that when we grow in him, we'll be more like him. So as we come today, we're talking about commission for the process. Some of the words that we'll be looking into, one is the word sift, S-I-F-T, sift. Is to separate or separate out by putting through a sieve or a seed. Uh, one thing, something that more or less shakes, uh, more or less when at the motion, it shakes forth and brings forth the, the greater grain and allows the chaff to be blown away. Uh, when you go through a, a, a sifting, to go through a, uh, to go through a, se a sieve, it more or less sorts out what is useful for, uh, from that which is valuable by shaking. Is, uh, for an example, is the separating of wheat from the chaff or the, uh, the sifting of flour to make fine flour. You just can't throw everything in there. Fine flour has to be shaken and has to be sieved and you know, go through the sieve to, to understand uh, uh, what it is to produce fineness. And I believe just like it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Our lives have to go through a sieve. Uh, the sifting of our lives uh, brings on the, the, the genuineness of greater faith. So when we look at this, we, we look at Amos, the ninth chapter. Amos, the ninth chapter, uh, starting with verse number eight. It says, behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving <coughs> that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Listen to this ninth verse. He said, for lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn in a, like as, like as corn in a sieve. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth, and all sinners, uh, all sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say that evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. 
What is Amos saying here? Amos had a word from the Lord. That Lord was going to sift. He was going to sift the house of Israel as corn. He said, but the part about it is, uh, not even the least, the smallest grain will fall to the earth. He said, the Lord knows who is he is. And needless to say, after shaking, sometimes the Lord has to shake us up to, to separate the bad from the good. And, and sometimes in that sift, we, it comes out to the point, whatever's left is what's valuable. And whenever you look at the, the sifting part of it, the Lord has a way of sifting us so that he can separate. And, and I'm so glad that we can't separate because we don't know what's good and what's bad. But he knows what's good and what's bad. So I'm glad he owns the sift. So on the, the seed, so whenever we get to a point of understanding what we go through, that he knows what, what belongs to him. So that's the part of sift. Uh, uh, the word sift, it means to separate uh, by putting through a sift. Uh, when we look at intercession, intercession is the act of interceding by prayer, petition, or entreating for favor of another to plead on the behalf of another. And I'm so glad that intercession is a part of prayer by which we can intercede for others. And I'm so glad that even when we look down through the Old Testament and New Testament, God always had someone that would intercede. But when we come to the New Testament, we're glad that Jesus interceded on our behalf. That means he stepped in and, and more or less prayed for us. Even when we were yet without strength, he prayed for us. So intercession is a major part of what we're talking about today. Also, the word process. The word process is a series of actions or operations that culminate to a projected end. It means a series of actions that produce an expectation. Uh, it comes from the word, it comes from the scripture, John the eighth chapter, verses 31 and 32. Now listen to what he says here. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now a lot of people say set free. Uh, it more or less brings on the, the, the connotation when we understand what make means. Make is a process. That means that we are made free by the word, by the way we line up with the word of God. We are made free in that process. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The more truth we have, the more free we become. So I'm grateful to know that, that as we study, we are finding the truths of God that continually wash over us and helps us to understand when we line up with the word, the word more or less takes place and the truths become a part of our life. When we are, we are often blind to the process by which the Lord allows us to be put on trial. That comes from uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter number uh, 4. 1 Peter 4 uh, verses 12 and 13 where he says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to unto you but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when ye, when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy the Lord wants us to have joy on this room he wants us to understand that all suffering all the things that we go through they're not bad, but it works for our good because there's some things that God wants to burn up. And, and I'm so glad that, that when we come down to this, there's some things agriculturally, and I'm glad I'm be, being from the country. There's some terms that, that come from the country that help me to understand that God had to have some country in him. When he talks about sifting, when he talks about pruning, when he talks about doing things that bring on the connotation that, that there's some things going to have to happen that you can produce a whole lot more. So when I look at this, he says, 
He says, the enemy seeks to separate us from obedience to the word and, and the will of God. But God's will is that we just not hear the word, but we be doers of the word. The process known as sifting is found figuratively in Isaiah and Amos. It's figurative because it tells what the Lord is going to do. He said the Lord will sift. All these things bring on the understanding of the Lord shaking some stuff up. But listen to what he says. Listen to what it says here. Uh, the common practice or agricultural process used in corn or corn or wheat separation uh, from uh, and the grain from the chaff. While it is agricultural term, it benefits uh, its benefits reach into the spirit realm and search out gen the genuine faith of the believer. Romans 8 and 28, which is one of my favorite verses, says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So that means that even though it don't feel good, it's working for my good. So we're going to get into the scripture here where, where you know, in Luke, uh, Luke, the the... 22nd chapter, starting with verse number 31, Luke 22, uh, starting with verse number 31, it says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, for thee, that thy faith faileth not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said, and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And when we look at this scripture, it, it beckons us. Dr. Luke uh, brings us this very account of a conversation that Jesus holds uh, with the disciples. And he holds this conversation with the disciples as they are bickering back and forth about who's the greatest, who's the greatest among them. And when he answers them, he, he lets them know in no uncertain term, uh, because, you know, you may know the most, don't mean you're the greatest. He, he, he gives them this verse in verse number 26 and 27, and verse number 26 and 27, he said, but ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that does serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at me, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you as he that serveth. Jesus said, now, the guest is the one that's the greatest. But listen, the best seat in the house is one who serves. He said, I am among you as one that serves. So if you want to take this understanding, you're not great because you sit at the table. You're great because you're able to serve. And that lessens the understanding or brings you down to a humble state. And see, needless to say, this was a setup for Peter. Because <laughs> he's getting ready to talk to Peter. But he brings him in this state of humility before he allows Peter to know what's going to happen. I'm so glad that Jesus already knows what's going to happen before it ever happens. And even if it does happen, he allowed it to happen. We're going to go into that here in just a second. He says right here, he says right here, he asks, he asks them in verse 26 and 27, the ideal of knowing who you are carries great weight in the spirit realm. Before Satan can come and attack one of God's children. There has to be a permission granted. I wish I, I believe I can stop there and you can shout from that understanding. For the simple understanding is before you can come under attack, the Lord already knew you were coming under attack. And needless to say, if you had your ear, your spiritual ears up, you would have heard him telling you, you're getting ready to come under attack. So I'm looking at this right here. That, that even in this, the Lord Jesus says unto, unto Peter. Now, listen to what he says now. Hear what he says. 
that when we come to this point, he says, Simon, Simon. Well, let's stop right there for a minute. Because we understand that he was called or surnamed Peter. Peter means small rock or stone. But Jesus here calls him by his original name, which is Simon. Simon in the Greek means hearing. Hearing is what the Lord is saying to him now. He says, now, Simon, Simon, it means hear me, hear me, hear what I'm saying. Now, I'm not calling you Peter. I'm not building the church yet, but I'm trying to get you to hear what's getting ready to happen. Now, listen to what he says here. Now, the reason why I say permission has to be granted, I go back to Job, uh, Job uh, 1. Uh, Job 1, verses 6 through 12, or Job 2, 2, uh, 1 through 6. Both accounts is where Satan comes before God. The Bible said the sons of God presented themselves when Satan came in the midst of them. And Satan said, you got to hedge about your servant. And needless to say, it was not Satan that bought up the name of Job. It was God that bought him up. And said, have you considered my servant Job? And, and in, that first, in that first part, he said, now, you got a hedge about him that I can't get to him. And well, the Lord said, well, I, you know, I'll let you get to him, but, but you know, you know just, go, just go as far as I'll let you go. And needless to say, in that second, in that, in that uh, second chapter, verses one through six, the same thing happened. He came back again and, and permission was granted that he could come and, and more or less bring an understanding what Job was concerned. Job is, even though chronologically is situated in the Bible, is considered one of the first books of the Bible because it gives a, uh, the understanding that Satan has to come and get permission. And when he is given permission, needless to say, he wreaks havoc in Job's life. Job doesn't understand where it's coming from, but he understands that God is still able to, to keep him. And I'm, I'm here today to tell you, I'm here to, to, to let you know right now, before that storm came, somewhere God was, you know, trying to get it across to you that a storm is coming. Needless to say, God allows you to know what's getting ready to happen. And needless to say, that's why your faith has to be genuine, has to be greater, and have the demands that you put everything else aside and focus in. You need to pray. You need to fast. You need to get to where you can hear what the Spirit is saying in the spirit realm. So needless to say, he says, Simon, Simon, hearing, hearing, listen, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Our faith in him, that is the genuine part, where you learn how to wait, how to trust, and how to lean on the Lord. That, that's the understanding. That's the good part. After everything else is shaking around, after everything else, after you done cried your eyeballs out, after you done done all the other things, after you done figured out, it, now, wait a minute now, there's something about this that is aimed at my spirit and aimed at me, at my faith. I've got to understand that I've got to learn how to have patience where God is concerned, learn how to wait where he's concerned, learn how to trust where he's concerned that whatever he doeth, just like Job, yea, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I've got to understand that my trust value has to be complete. So in that, when he tells him, when he says, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. There's a shaking going on. He's going to shake your life to bring forth the genuineness. And it's a good thing. Mm. It's a good thing that, that you're getting tried. I'm letting you know ahead of time, but I, I, I let you know this, Peter, but for the simple fact of knowing that one thing I've done for you, I prayed for you. I'm so glad that Jesus knows how to pray 
for his children. I'm so glad even in this day, 20 and 21, uh, 2021 in June, uh, the last day of June, 2021, that the Lord Jesus prayed for me. In the 17th chapter of John, he prayed for you as a child of God. He prayed that God would keep you in the midst of the world. He said, now I'm not trying to get you to take them from the world, but keep them in the midst of the world. I'm glad he prayed for me. He prayed for you. Needless to say, brothers and sisters, we are faced with so much opposition today. Satan is under attack, and I believe the attacks are getting greater as we go forth in him. But even though the attacks are greater, God has given us that much more grace to allow us to go through. That's some stuff that should have took us out of here a long time ago. But how many can thank God, put your hands together, and thank God today that God did not let it happen. He allowed the thing to happen, but he established greater grace in the midst of what you went through. And listen to what Jesus said here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you going and get, get, get this done. He says, I, neither says, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. He didn't say that, Peter, you fail not. He said that thy faith fail not. And needless to say, a fail-proof faith is a faith that has been tried. Can I say that again? A fail-proof faith is a faith that has been tried, uh, tried by the, the trials of life. And I go right back to 1 Peter again, where he said, think it not strange that these things have come upon you as if to try you as something strange. Don't, don't think it's strange, brothers and sisters. Don't ever get to a point of thinking, well, where did this come from? I know where it come from. The enemy has attacked you. But you, needless to say, there's an attack, especially where your faith is concerned. But don't let it rob you of your joy today. Today, as we come, he says that by, you know, I pray that thy faith fail not. And needless to say, he not only prayed that my faith fail not. And he said, when thou art converted, the word converted here means turn from one opinion or thought to another thought. And needless to say, there's some things that we have to change about our mind. Sometimes we, we can get to a point where we, we think, well, we do a red God down path. And God said, you need to change your mind on this thing because you're looking at it from, from your own lens. Don't look at it from your lens, but look at it from spiritual lens of why this happened. He said, needless to say, when thou art converted, Peter, Peter, before you can reach out to the Gentiles, you're going to have to be converted. Before you can help somebody else, you're going to have to have had help your own self and to understand what I'm doing in this last days. So when I look at it, Jesus foretells these events that, that will help him or that will cause Peter uh, to go out and understand that there's something coming in your life. That's going to cause a change in your life. But we listen to what he, what he says here. But when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And needless to say, before I can help strengthen somebody else, I have to be strengthened my own self. And to know that the things I'm going through is not only for me, but it's for me to help somebody else. But listen to what Peter said. Now, Peter, he didn't hear a thing Jesus said. How many know that there's some things that the Lord done put in the spirit realm that if I had heard it right, then I wouldn't have made some bad mistakes. Amen. He says right here, and he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go to go with thee both into prison and to death. Needless to say, Peter spoke before his before his heart was in gear with what he was faced with. So needless to say, when I look at this. He's made a bold statement. So there's a whole lot of people who have made bold statements before, but the Lord has shown them that they, they meant well, but they how to implement it, they didn't know how to implement it in the spiritual context. So when we look at Peter here, Peter says a bold, he said, I'm ready. I'm ready to go with you into, into prison and to death. I'm ready to die for you. And needless to say, Jesus knew where he was coming from because he knew Peter. Because that's where we look at, he says, and I tell thee, Peter. Now he calls him Peter. Because there's some things you will have to establish right here, Peter. 
You're going to have to have a firm foundation. He says, I say unto thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Peter, you're getting ready to go through something. And, and needless to say, your flesh is going to say, I don't even know that man. Your flesh is going to say, and the, the, the word says, in that last time he was asked, he cursed, he cursed and said, I don't even know him. So when I look at it, the only thing that brought forth uh, understanding when this happened, when the cock crew, and the only thing that happened when Jesus looked at him, he looked at him with the understanding that Peter, I told you this is going to happen. And the Bible says in this, and it's in this same chapter, the Bible said he went out and wept bitterly. Uh, Peter uh, failed in some things. His, his faith didn't fail, but physically he failed in some things. There's some things that's going to cause you to fail if you lean on your own accord. But you got to understand, your faith has to be adjusted. And the Lord is the one doing the adjusting. And when he adjusts your faith, listen to what I said. Sometimes he had to twerk it a little bit back to the understand, tweak it back to the understanding that you can't stand on your own. You can make statement after statement, but your faith has to be the one that implements it. So in this, I'm so glad that, you know, man may have gave up on you at this stage. Man may have gave up on you, but the Lord Jesus did not give up on Peter because after he was resurrected, he told what he was Martha. He said, Martha, you go tell my disciples that I go before them into Galilee. That's Mark 16 and 7. He said, I, yeah, go tell them that I go before them into Galilee and also Peter. He said, now, Peter has gone through some things, but there's some things he had to turn from. And this made Peter a whole lot stronger because of what he had to go through. And you are a lot stronger today because of what you had to go through. But uh, I'm praying for some people out here today that your faith doesn't fail. In sickness, don't let it fail. I, I, I pray for you. If you're going through some tough times with your children, don't let it fail. Don't let your faith fail. Don't let it fail. Don't let it fall to a point where Satan had gets the best of you. But I look at this like this. That trial, that sifting, come to make you stronger. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for what, Lord, your word has rendered unto us today. Pray, Father, Lord, as you have commissioned us, Lord, to, to more or less be strong. You have commissioned us in this process, Lord. That whatever we're going through, that we're going to come out better than what we had when we went in. Today, Father, Lord, we pray for that for the faith of your people today, that, Lord, we'll be stronger and that we'll be a whole lot better. There's some things that we failed in, Lord, and we failed miserably. Our hearts have had to be adjusted. But, Lord, when we turn back to you, you were still there waiting for us to come back to you. We thank you today, Father, that you didn't give up on us. But, Lord, you made us stronger by what we had to go through. I thank you for praying for us. Thank you for letting us know, Father, Lord, that we're going to go through some things. But you are there with us always. Now, Father, Lord, keep us until we meet again. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you again for joining in with us. And as we have come today, I pray that someone's faith has been strengthened uh, by the pandemic or whatever you've had to go through 14 months. We've had to do this. I talked to my wife and my wife has been recording us for a little over a year. And this has been a blessing to us because we didn't let Satan get the best of us. He attacked us, but we, we understand that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. God bless you and may heaven smile on you until we meet again on next Wednesday. May God continue to keep you and may he strengthen your faith in this process. God bless you.